Y'all know the feeling, right? You're sitting there watching the game, your family night, your training camp. And some player wearing a jersey number that you haven't seen before makes a great play. And then your, your wife, your girlfriend, your child, someone tugs on your arm and goes, who's that? For once, wouldn't it be nice to not have to look down at that roster card that somebody gave you or Google the answer? Follow this video and you're going to find out exactly out of all the Packers running around a training camp, who's wearing what jersey number and what exactly is it that they do. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Lombardi Time Brews, where I'm your host, John Delray. Today, today marks one week until the shareholder meeting and ultimately nine days until the first training camp practice for the 2023 season for the Green Bay Packers. So I decided, you know, what else should we do? We've been talking about all this different stuff for months now. Now it's time to really focus in on what is going to be this year's roster and prepare for what are some of those numbers we're going to see running around training camp if we're fortunate to go. Or um, when we see a jersey number make a particular play, without having to look at our call cards, we could tell exactly who it is who's making that play. So I decided to put this together by jersey number, just a little primer as to who every single member of the Green Bay Packers 91 man roster is. So what you're going to hear is the player, the jersey number they're wearing, how the Packers got them, how they wound up in Green Bay of all places, a fact about them, be it about their performance or something else, as well as where realistically are they kind of on the roster at this juncture? Are they the definitive QB1 that we're going to talk about today? Or do they happen to be one of the bottom of the roster, maybe uphill battle type players on this roster? So one quick note before we totally dive into the numbers. Uh, this week is going to be a little different. I'm doing five episodes this week. Decide to take all of these numbers and break it up by 20s going from... Zero. Well, there are no Packers zero right now, but all the way up then through 99. So you're going to hear a five-part series this week, 20 guys or 20 numbers worth of guys every day this week to get us ready for training camp. So without further ado, number one. Now, number one, there was some interesting conversation about it because as soon as Jaden Reed got drafted, the Packers put out something with Reed and number one on it. Uh, there's just one problem, though, and you would think the Packers know this. Number one has been unofficially retired for Curly Lambeau. Hasn't been used since uh, Curly. So, yeah, that was a quick correction then put out by the Packers, and Jaden Reed is indeed going to be wearing a different number. Number one is, is unofficially retired for the founder. Now, number two, no one as of right now on the roster is wearing number two. Of course, that would be Mason Crosby's number for the last number of years. And he has yet to find another team. I don't think he's coming back to Green Bay, unfortunately. But number two is still available as it is right now. Number three happens to be retired for Tony Cannondeo. So that one's out. Number four happens to be retired for Brett Favre. So that one's out. So one quick note here. Keep in mind, the Packers have a lot of retired numbers. We've already had a number here within the top five. So the Packers, like a few other teams, are allowed in training camp to issue duplicate numbers to players. You know, basically a, a 6A and a 6B, if you will. But as long as they play different positions, they can have the same number. And the Packers do utilize that almost every offseason, and we're going to cover that today. Number five, the next number we're going to talk about, has been unofficially retired for Paul Hornig. So no one's going to be running around wearing that. Then we get to our first duplicate number, and let's call him 6A. Dallin Levitt. Signed last year as a free agent from the Las Vegas Raiders. Uh, he was second on the team with 305 special team snaps last year while also forcing seven tackles, which tied for third on the team in special teams. Realistically, where does Dallin Levitt fit in this year's roster? He was re-signed at a one-year contract. Bisaccia adores him by all accounts. If he's going to make the roster, it's again going to be as a special teams ace. By all accounts, he's one of Bisaccia's most trusted personnel in the special teams unit. He does do exemplary performance there. However, his performance on defense has historically been negligible. Even last year when the Packers faced injuries at the safety position, I believe he logged one defensive snap all of last year so if he's making this roster it's as a special teamer and it probably is going to be as either technically speaking the fifth or sixth safety kept on the roster 
Number 6B, let's go with that, and that would be player Jadakiss Bonds. He was acquired as an undrafted free agent from Hampton University. He played in all 12 games as a sophomore in 2019, earning first team all Big South honors after finishing with a career high 70 catches for a career best 943 yards and a single season school record of 15 touchdowns. I took that from Packers.com and the presser of, of when they signed him. You know, roster prospects, Jadakiss, as a undrafted free agent, he has a very, very steep hill to climb. Keep in mind that the Packers already have their top two wide receiver in Watson and Dobbs. Then they drafted Jaden Reed. They've got Toure, who they've been glowing about all offseason. Spent a draft pick on Wicks. Spent a draft pick on DuBose. There's also Bo Melton. See what I'm saying? Wide receivers. Uh, a bit congested. Plus, you've got OTA darling Leak Heath there as well. So Jadakiss has a lot of people to hurdle to make it onto the Packers active roster. However, whether he makes it onto the roster or not, one thing that we can definitively say is Jadakiss Bonds happens to be one of the coolest names of all time. He belongs in that Hall of Fame, if nothing else. Moving on, number seven, that's going to be Quay Walker, the first rounder from last year. His 846 snaps was second amongst all rookie inside linebackers last year. His 405 coverage snaps, again, was second amongst all rookie inside linebackers. However, where he didn't finish second was with his 70.8 coverage grade per PFF, which was the best amongst all rookie inside linebackers with at least 150 snaps. Amongst the same peers, his 70.3 pass rushing grade was fourth. Yeah, Quay Walker, while he did have some up and down play as a rookie, he is very definitively a starter next to Devondre Campbell. And the, you see all the traits last year. I mean, yes, there was the uh, behavior incidents that occurred twice, but you saw on the field all of the traits that could make him a star at the inside linebacker position and certainly showed why the Packers believed in him enough to make him a first round pick. There are questions about whether the Packers are going to experiment with more him more on the edge in certain packages, but certainly his true spot is that number two inside linebacker next to Devondre Campbell, uh, a spot that he is going to hold hopefully for a very, very long time. Number eight, that's quarterback Sean Clifford. He was a fifth round pick this last year out of Penn State. And this is from Penn State's notes. Clifford finished as Penn State's all-time leader in wins, completion percentage, passing yards, completions, total yards, passing touchdowns, and attempts while also finishing third in passing efficiency. However, perhaps my favorite thing about Sean Clifford, and perhaps one of the most important things that you actually want in a backup quarterback, the man's been a captain six times, his last two years in high school, but then he's also one of only two Penn State Nittley Lions to be a four-time captain over his collegiate career. Look, he's competing for the number two quarterback job with Danny Antling. Almost assuredly, you'd think he's going to get a roster spot on the 53 because I highly doubt Brian Gutekunst is going to cut a fifth-round pick in his rookie year. So almost assuredly, he's going to be on the 53. The question is, is he going to be the true quarterback two? Or is he going to get beat out by Etling or someone else for quarterback three? But I will say this too, and about quarterback number two, oftentimes you want that player to be a translator, especially with a younger quarterback as the starter. You want your backup to be another set of eyes for the quarterback, a translator between head or quarterback coach and the quarterback himself. And it doesn't necessarily have to be an old guy to do that. Now, some people would say at number two quarterback, you just want the dude who can throw the ball the second best on the team. Hey, yeah, that makes logical sense, but I'm not sure that it applies here to Clifford, and I'm not sure it applies to why the rationale as to why the Packers may have drafted him in the first place. So we will see where Clifford falls in line, and if the Packers do ultimately make a move for a veteran quarterback. Number nine, one of the easier ones on the roster, I think a lot of people know this, that belongs to Christian Watson, second round pick out of the 2022 draft. Uh, according to Derek Kruger of uh, Packer Report, Watson was a machine on crossing routes last year. He received a passer rating of 141 on his second most utilized route being crossers. And only Justin Jefferson, Mike Williams, and DeAndre Hopkins did better. This isn't like a route that he ran like once or twice. This was his second most utilized route. And he put up that kind of number behind those kind of dudes. Where he's fit on the roster? Hopefully the next great generational Packer wide receiver. Packers seem to turn these guys out year over year. It's Watson's turn now. Number 10, quarterback, Jordan Love. He was the first round pick in 2020. Look, I'm going to keep this fact short and sweet. According to PFF, 
He was their eighth best rated passer last year. Forget about the caveats and the contingencies and like, oh yeah, but he only threw the ball. Yeah, I know. We're all aware of it. Let's just stick to eighth best passer last year. Jordan Love, by all accounts, according to PFF, was a top 10 quarterback last year. Let's roll with that. Where is he on this roster? Definitively quarterback. Jersey number 11, that goes to player Jaden Reed, second round pick out of Michigan State just this last year. And he's really been labeled as like the slot guy, right? But despite being labeled that, only 22% of his snaps at Michigan State last year were in the slot, as opposed to his first two years at Michigan State where it was 98% and 75%. In the NFL, does he project as more of a slot type? Yes, but to pigeonhole him there and say that he's only played there, that is a misnomer. Where is he going to fit on this roster? Realistically, uh, starting out maybe throughout the first quarter of the season, I envision him being a little bit more of a gadget player. Some of the Swerve and Irvin plays from years ago. And, and will he eventually progress into more complicated stuff? Yes, certainly. And maybe, maybe he'll break out because he'll pick up on the offense quicker. But ultimately, at the end of the day, where is he going to fit? First quarter of the season, don't expect a lot gadgety type stuff, but progress and progress and progress until he's firmly in the top three wide receiver rotation. Number 12. Yeah. For the first time in a long time, there is no number 12. And I can't imagine the Packers are going to give out that number to anyone anytime soon because that will be retired soon enough. Number 13 goes to rookie Duntavian Wicks. He was a fifth round pick out of Virginia this year. Here's the interesting fact about Wicks. I know this one isn't about play, but I just thought it was interesting. He's according to a Packers.com, the first wide receiver drafted out of the University of Virginia by the Green Bay Packers ever, ever. <laughs> For a team that's over a hundred years old, this is the first time they ever chose that position from that school. I thought that was interesting. How does that kind of thing happen? I'm curious as to how often it happens. What are his prospects? I mean, he's going to be a roster lock, right? Fifth round pick this year. More than likely going to be kind of in the wide receiver four, wide receiver five conversation. And if you put Toure in the slot or Reed in the slot, then Wicks is one of your first backups to go play on the boundary following Watson and Dobbs. No doubt about it that Wicks, coming off of his incredibly strong 21 season in college and not a strong 22 season in college, Wix is a project the Packers are very much looking forward to developing to enter into their wide receiver rotation. Next number would be number 14, Don Hudson. Yeah, I know he's not on the roster now, but he is the one that, that number is retired for. You're not going to see anyone wearing 14 for the Packers ever again. Same thing with number 15, of course, retired for the man himself, the person that I consider to embody the Packer way more than any other human who's ever walked the earth, Bart Starr. Number 16, though, getting back to our active Packers, that would go to Pat O'Donnell, their starting punter of last year. He was signed as a free agent prior to the season last year. He had only 20 punts returned last year, which ranked 7th in the NFL. And historically speaking, considering that the Packers' punt coverage is not exactly the best in the NFL, we're going to count that as a very good thing for Pat O'Donnell. As for where he stands in this roster... He's their starting punter, but there is some conversation to be had. If the Packers move on from him, they can save a couple million dollars on the cap. And he may find himself in a competition with Dan Whalen, a free agent that they signed, who had some success in other leagues throughout the course of the summer. And O'Donnell may really find himself in a battle here that no one was really expecting. Number 17, that's going to be Anders Carlson, the Packers' rookie kicker. He was a sixth-round pick out of Auburn. 59% of his kickoffs in college went for a touchback. He also connected on over 98% of his collegiate extra points. And I will say this too, if you're looking for, because you're looking over the last couple stats, last couple years for Anders, and it's not, it's not exemplary, right? Well, go back to 2020, when he was, one of, he was one of the best kickers in all of college football, and according to the Associated Press, he was their first team All-SEC kicker in 2020. If he can recapture that form... He is definitively the Packers kicker for the future. And if it's where he stands in the roster, it's going to take a pretty catastrophic preseason for them to move on from him, I do believe, since they invested sixth round capital. Now, number 18, one of the more interesting players on the roster right now, for sure. And that's wide receiver Malik Heath. He was a UDFA out of Ole Miss. Uh, and here's this fact. Everyone fell in love with Jonathan Mingo in the draft, right? I know I did. A lot of people did. Talking about how he is the Packer wide receiver of this draft. But look, he and Malik Heath played in the same offense. Mingo had 51 catches for 861 yards and five touchdowns. Heath 
had 60 catches for 971 yards and five touchdowns. Which one produced more? Oh yeah, the dude who was a UDFA. So he may not have the physical tools of Mingo, he may not have that profile, may not have the fancy RAS score. But when placed in the same offense, Malik Heath did outproduce Jonathan Mingo. So he was the darling of OTAs, but still going to be a little bit of an uphill climb to make the roster as a UDFA. He did have a number of spectacular catches in OTAs, certainly. And he's gotten a lot of people to talk about him because he did have games in college where he exploded onto the scene. But he is going to have to beat out probably 7th round pick Grant DuBose, special teams demon Bo Melton, amongst others to truly get that last wide receiver job on the Packers 53. Certainly possible. Right now, maybe even likely, considering that DuBose hasn't been doing much considering throughout the offseason because of an injury. So, possible? Yes. Uphill battle? Yeah, it still is. Number 19, that's going to be quarterback Danny Etling. He was a practice squad player for just a little stretch in 2021, but then was a practice squad player all of last year for the Green Bay Packers. Interesting fact about him while at LSU, Etling set a single season record for interception percentage, throwing only two picks on 275 pass attempts. What are his prospects for the roster this year? Well, realistically, he's in that quarterback battle. He's battling with Sean Clifford. And if the Packers bring in a veteran, then I got to believe Danny Etling is probably going to be the one to go. Let's say that just hypothetically in the preseason, they decide to go out and sign Teddy Bridgewater so that he can be a mentor to Jordan Love. Well, then who are you going to release? Your fifth round pick from this year, Sean Clifford? Probably not. Probably going to be the practice squad guy, Danny Etling. So it's on him to really produce in training camp and the preseason opportunities he gets to prove that he deserves a spot on the 53 and that his practice squad career should cease. Last one for dead A, number 20. That's safety, Rudy Ford. He was picked up off waivers from Jacksonville last year. He was originally brought in as a flyer for special teams. Kind of a special teams ace. He had been a, a dramatic producer on special teams every year in his career prior. Now all of a sudden, the Packers bring him in because they need special teams help, which we all know about, and the dudes start playing safety after some injuries to Amos and, you know, production problems with Savage. And then Ford wound up posting the fourth highest PFF grade on the entire defense for the year. Yeah, Rudy Ford was the fourth highest graded defender for the Green Bay Packers last year. And in fact, you want to get more specific than that? Let's look at the coverage grade. The only member of the secondary to score higher in coverage than Rudy Ford was Jair Alexander, who last time I checked was fairly decent at football. He's a roster lock, there's no doubt about it. The only conversation is whether he can duplicate his success from last year, whether his safety performance was more of a one-year wonder. So, if he can duplicate his success, he's going to be a starting safety all year, no doubt about it. To do that, though, he's going to have to ward off some depth new depth to the team that we are going to be talking about tomorrow. Thanks so much for joining me on Lombardi Time Brews. Hope you enjoyed numbers 1 through 20. Tomorrow we're covering 21 through 40, the next stretch of numbers, and diving into who are those men that are going to be lining up for the Green Bay Packers starting next week. Hope everyone has a great night tonight. I will see you tomorrow of all days. And as always, Go Pack Go! <music>